You're here because you're in charge of training and you're ready to figure out who is this training for. Today, we're gonna dive into learner personas and look at how they fit into learning and design projects. This video is part of the series, Process for Learning Leaders, where we break down each step of your next L&D project. Before we jump in, make sure that you like and subscribe so I can continue to create more videos like this. Okay, let's get started. What is a learner persona and why does it matter? Learner personas are tools we use to describe the characteristics that represent the group of learners that will be taking the training. Having a better understanding of the learner and their needs is fundamental for designing training that's focused, engaging, and motivational. If you're familiar with the learner focus framework, then you'll remember our first step is to find the problem. Learner personas are one of the tools that can help us determine who our learners are and what problems they may have. Let's take a look. So here we have one of the learner persona templates that I use whenever I'm starting a new design project. This is the client type persona. So if I am trying to find characteristics that are common for a type of learner, then this is the persona that I want to start with. First, we start with our ideal user story. This story can be based on a single user or it can be a combination of stories, but you want to describe the problem that the user is having. So if you're trying to determine, do we need to uh, create training that is micro learning? So shorter um, burst of learning that we want to roll out and we want to make it mobile friendly then my ideal user story is I'm probably going to write a story about how my client type is struggling with trying to fit learning into their already packed day. So maybe they are in engineering and they have to do a lot of on the job training, but they have these e-learning modules that they have to take while in between the on the job training parts. So we might want to tell a story about how this client type shared that they normally have only 30 minutes between one assignment to the next. So being able to access the training on their phone in between assignments would be very helpful. So those are the kind of stories you want to tell. I usually choose a picture of someone that's representative of this type of client. So that client, it could be a picture you find from stock images. So it's just something that humanizes this whole process so that we can actually see who this learner is that we're trying to help. Now, you can also fill out the profile below. It can be a combination of male, female, or you can keep this off completely if it doesn't matter, if gender is not something that is a part of the learner demographics that matter. You can also keep the age or remove it. Sometimes if you know that you are creating training for higher education, then you're probably going to want to put an age range in there. Or if you are working on training for older people around insurance, you would maybe put an age around there because you know that you want it for a certain age group area. So that can be specific or that can be general. Again, it's really just trying to identifying characteristics about who the group of learners are. Now we come over to the professional profile. This is really just groups of characteristics that most of the learners are going to have in common. Are they students? If they're students, are they graduate or undergraduates? Are they self-taught learners? Maybe they're in beginner programming if they're in higher education. If they are sales professionals, sales professionals who sell plastics in, you know, a certain area area. So you really want to just start at the top with general and then drill down to like, what is it that's very particular about this group of learners? Learning prerequisites. These are just the main things that you know are going to impact the learner. So like I said, if this was micro learning and it was mobile friendly, we know that they would need a smartphone or a tablet or a laptop, a mobile device, internet uh, would certification need to be a part of this and then you want to condense this all down and describe this learner's problem into a single sentence okay so this is one type of persona that you can use where you're working with a group let's take a look at another persona where we 
build a story around a single type of learner. Okay, so in this persona, you can see that we're looking at very specific details about one type of person. This is a great type of persona to use if you know that you are trying to create something more specific. So this is really good for sales training. This is also really good if you are creating a course that you're going to sell to consumers. The more specific you get here, sometimes the easier it can be when you're marketing or selling those courses. So um, when we are creating this, we want to get very specific. What's the age? Uh, pronouns, occupation, like we're describing a single person. So we're going to go through and describe everything about him or her in this first column. We're going to use a picture that represents who this learner is. You can include a quote below. So what's something that the learner would say, or what's something that the person that inspired you to create this course, what is something that they have said to you that you want to capture here? Then we go into motivation. So this is where we dive deep into what is motivating them to learn. Is there an incentive? Is it high or low? Is there a fear? Is there a sense of achievement? Are they doing this for growth, power, social? So you can grab these bars and you can, um, Adjust those a little bit if you want to show a little bit more about incentive is low, but fear is high. So whatever it is, you can go in and use those bars to kind of adjust that. And that all comes into play when you are deciding on how you're going to talk about this course and present this course to this ideal learner. Then we come down to the goals. What are the goals that we want to achieve with this course? Not us. What are the goals that the learner wants to achieve? By taking this course, they will be able to do what? Uh, what are frustrations or barriers that are getting in their way? What problem are they having? Again, reducing that problem to a single sentence. And then just like we saw on our other persona prerequisites. What are things that they have to have in place in order to be able to take this course? So we want to list those out. And then you can have your bio here that describes who this learner is in more detail. All right. So now that we've looked at the two personas, let's go through a few of the questions that I'm commonly asked about these. First, which persona do I use? Well, it really just depends on your preferences and the type of training that you're designing. The first persona is really more general. So I use this to describe a group of learners. This would be a good choice for like new employee training, compliance training, those types of things uh, is where you want to describe a group of people, a group of learners that would be going through the training. But if you're designing something like sales training, a career pathway program, or you're designing training that's going to be sold to the public, then you probably want to get a little bit more specific. That's where that second persona can come into play. You can really drill down into the details of the learner and who they are and what motivates them to take these courses. So a second question that I'm often asked is, once I complete this persona, what do I do with it? Okay, that's a great question. The first thing you want to do is use this to identify who it is that you need to collect information from during your analysis phase. So this would be your group that you would survey. This would be representative of the people that you would want to interview. You know, everybody that you want to collect information from, uh, that you, which you do in the analysis phase, you're going to be able to identify them from this learner persona that you've created. But the persona does help you more than just identify who needs to be surveyed. It's a tool to help you find the voice of your training your slide content, your instructions, your voiceover scripts, and all the guides that you create can now be customized so that you're talking to this one type of learner. This means that you have this filter now. You can run all your content through it to determine, are we saying the right thing? Are we helping this learner solve their problem? Is this going to resonate with them? And the great thing about it is all of this leads to a more engaged learning audience and a more engaging learning experience. Okay, final question. How do I get started with these learner personas? The easiest way is to just download these templates, use these and begin filling them out. And 
the information that you're going to use to fill these out is going to be conversations with stakeholders, subject matter experts, and then whatever information you can't fill in, you're going to collect that once you begin talking to ideal learners. Okay, so you should have enough to begin to identify who it is you want to collect information from. But as you begin having conversations with them, you can really start filling out that persona until you have it complete. So you can download this template using the links in the description. Once you have this tool, then you're ready to begin figuring out who your ideal learner is for your next training. And this is going to take you one step closer to creating your best training yet. Be sure to comment below or reach out if you have questions or if you need support. Thanks so much and I'll see you in the next video.